Hey friends out there in YouTube land, Robert Ham here with Robert Ham Photography. Today I'm here to talk with you about the X100F and how I get great portraits with it on location and use it professionally. This is the blowout video. This is the video for those that don't know anything about the X100F and for those that are on the fence with Lightroom edits as well as my workflow at the end. So stick around, let's just talk about the setup. We'll get into it now. This is the X100F kitted out the way I generally use it for portraits. Talk to you about it real quick just to let you know I've got the 50 millimeter conversion lens on it. I've got a full size Yongyo Wine 560 flash on there. This is the Series 4. I can use multiple of these flashes if I need to. However, generally speaking, I just use one at a time. And at the top of the camera, of course, I've got a light modifier. This happens to be the light sphere. I like the Gary Fong product. I enjoy it. I've got the beauty dish and all the different ones. I've been using it for years and it works very well for me. Now this setup, this small rangefinder setup, is something that's really quite interesting. And all the images that you're going to see today have been taken with this camera using the included three-stop neutral density filter as well as this one-and-a-half-stop circular polarizer. I know that I'm getting four-and-a-half stops of light gating capability when I use both the ND filter as well as the circular polarizer together. That being the case, I also use this flash pointed directly at the person, and I use that in the bright daylight, like you'll see. And you might say, Rob, if you're trying to use flash in the daylight, why in the world would you want to cover it with some kind of light modifier? And the answer is quite simply, using this camera the way it is, I can shoot at f2 at 1 250th of a second, and I still need this flash in order to light my subject up from the bright uh, background. Now the nice part is, as you'll see, I'm able to do that very well and there will even be a couple of examples of without flash and with flash. Now these are from real portrait sessions that I was paid real money to provide and you're seeing the workflow as they come through. So not only should you feel special, you guys are great, but you should also get to see exactly why I would use what and when I would use it. So before we continue anymore, I just want to say thank you to all the subscribers out there. I want to remind you that I've got a camera going on, hamcamera.com, the ham camera company. Uh, 237 awesome backers have helped me bring back a box camera. If you'd like to know more about that, just check out New Box One over at ham with two M's, camera.com. Uh, first thing I kind of want to talk about is how we move forwards. We're we're at a very bright day, okay? Notice that we're at ISO 200, 33 millimeter is my focal length. That's because 33 times 1.5 is right at 50, f2, and I'm at 1 250th of a second. Before we go anywhere else, I want you to think about that. Look at this sky in the background. Recognize here, even on this next picture, we're at the same. Look at the sky and see the blue sky. Look at our model and see that our little model is properly illuminated. And then put your brain to work for a second. I'm trying to help you guys understand why the X100 series cameras have been so powerful, but also underrated. Look at this, 1 250th of a second, F2. Does this make sense to you? It really shouldn't. It absolutely shouldn't, specifically at ISO 200. And here's why. Uh, these conditions, knowing that I'm using four and a half stops of light, cap uh, light gating capability, means that 1 250th plus one complete stop would be 1 500th, 1 500th would be 1,000th, 1 1,000th to be 1 2,000th. We're at three stops right now. 1 2,000th, the next stop up is 1 4,000th. Now that half a stop, 1 4,000th, and the half a stop up from there was 1 6,000th. This picture is only made possible because of two things. The first thing is neutral density filters that can gate light, in this case the internal filter, which gates three stops, and the circular polarizer, which gates one and a half stops. The second thing is flash. Without the flash, we would have had a properly exposed background, but our model would not have been properly exposed. Let's switch up. I've done several of these. We can continue on. Look at that pretty face. We've got a bit of a Dutch tilt. When we move in to actually look at the detail, we're at one to one. We've got lots of great detail. We can see the eyelashes, the eyebrows, the hair on the little head. Of course, we're shooting at f2, so we've got this beautiful bokeh in the background as well. Now, the lens has a very low focusing distance, very short. I'm probably about two feet, maybe pushing three feet. I can't say. It's just over arm's length. Now, we can also see, let's talk about a little bit of the processing that I do. 
beautiful color. The white balance is as shot in the camera. Now, I did have my white balance turned on to 5600K with no adjustment, and it just took care of business right there. Fujifilm nailed it. The, the color of the picture is absolutely beautiful. Continuing forward, we see that I did change my picture profile to Astia because I find that beautiful for portraits. In fact, it was so sharp, I actually brought down the clarity a little bit so that the little skin tones and everything didn't look so in focus. You know, I like a little bit of a soft portrait, but you can see we still have quite a bit of detail. Now, I do use my exposure sliders, and this has mainly to do with the ethnicity of the model. In order for our uh, people of color, uh, whether you're uh, Hispanic or Asian or even Caucasians, your skin looks different under different lighting conditions, specifically with flash. So if you want the person to look like you're actually taking a picture of them, then you need to make sure that you're adjusting your saturation to match what they look like instead of becoming an orange blob. So this is where my color work takes place. We look over a little bit more. We can see some more little pretty little pictures. And I just love these right here. One thing to notice is all the bokeh in the background. Now this is achieved because we are actually photographing very close to her so that we can get these nice pretty pictures. As we go forward, here's one right here of mom, nice pretty portrait, lots of detail in the eyelashes and in the hair. There's a little bit of a haze that's kind of coming in up top, and the reason for that is the flash is very bright. So on my next set of images, I actually tone the flash down some. We've got a nice smile as she's smiling and everything. In fact, but once again, look in the background. We're shooting these portraits, and we're getting these beautiful backgrounds that are nicely defocused. Now we're going to move over. Uh, let's bring in some family shots real quick, some fun family shots. And as you look right here, we're still getting beautiful bokeh in the background. Nice, pretty smiles. Absolutely beautiful. Lots and lots and lots of detail in the images. We'll zoom in right over here to one-to-one. -to -one. You can see we've got great detail in the eyes. We've got great detail in uh, all over the place. And... There's quite a bit of a beautiful background blur. Here we even have some beautiful motion blur. We've got 1 3 20th of a second up here. He's throwing his daughter up into the air. Look at the pretty smile. Look at the tack sharp face of dad. There you go. It's nice and sharp. Nice and sharp on the detail on the mustache and whiskers and beard and the hair. Big smile. Sharp around here. And then we've got this beautiful bit of motion blur as our daughter is being a little tossed up in the air. And a gorgeous background. Once again, look at this beautiful background, okay? This is nice. Now, friends, I've jumped into a different folder real quick. I want to share with you something. What I want to show you is that in these JPEGs, look what happens when you come in here. This is what happens when you don't use flash, and this is something that's very important. Now, you can use flash with almost any camera out there, but we're at 1 550th of a second at f2 right here. Most cameras are not going to sync with flash at 1 550th. You'll find banding. Also, keep in mind that I'm currently using my three-stop neutral density filter that's built into the camera. So this isn't really 1 550th. We'll call it 1 500, 1,000, 1 2,000. This is more like what 1 4,000th of a second would look like if you had a three-stop neutral density filter on it. Okay, now, continuing on along, I want to jump up to another picture right here. Look at this. We're over here. Once again, we've got 1 2 80th right there, but look, the background's nice and bright. I love the blurriness, uh, the bokeh that's there, but look what happens here. We lose quite a bit of that beautiful bright warmth. Okay, I want to show you another set of pictures, a set of photos that I took in front of this little shack right here. Right, we have the flash on. I was specifically using the EFX 20 flash, and I was using it one over one half power, which is important to know. I was also at one eight hundredth of a second in my shutter with that three stop neutral density filter. Now let's think about what one eight hundredth looks like. So we're going to round real quick to a thousand. One one thousand, that's the next stop is one two thousandth, the next stop is one four thousandth, the next stop is one eight thousandth. So we're not exactly at one eight thousandth of an equivalent shutter speed. If everything was the same, we're probably more like one six thousandth. And uh, that, that's what that three-stop neutral density filter does for you. It lets you shoot in these bright situations. Now, why is it so bright? Well, simply put, look what's going on over here. <laughs> We've got quite a bit of sky in the background. And that sky is really tending us to be towards the right side of our histogram. It's a very bright setting. Also, we're, we decided to fill the flash or fill the shadows with flash. That's what that does. 
So let me just kind of skip between these two, even though they're not in the same exact spot, they're in the same place. Let me just kind of give you an example. This picture, you can see they're standing in front of the sign. This picture, the sign is to the right of the photo. They just stepped to the left a little bit. I want you to understand that. Okay. Also, we are photographing at a different angle, and it's a little darker in the background. It's not as bright as the sky. And look at the difference in the faces that we get. When we zoom in here, we can actually see the detail in the faces of my kids and my family, and whether or not they're putting up with the fact that I'm taking their picture or not. We get a little bit better picture now, but even now standing 10 feet away-ish, somewhere around there, we're still able to brighten the faces, which is exactly what we want to do. We expose for the sky, and then we set our flash to properly illuminate our subjects. And this is just a really great way to illustrate exactly what the flash and the neutral density filter will do for you. I'm going to jump back out and bring it into the video by going over with you exactly how I use the flash in order to get these results. So now we're back and we're going to finish this up by talking about flash, the neutral density filter, and the high sync speed. First of all, it should be quite obvious right now that your neutral density filter is very, very important because it lets you shoot in brighter conditions by gating the light that's entering your camera. Three stops is excellent. <laughs> that means that we can shoot in a situation with one one thousandth of a second mechanical shutter when it would normally be one eight thousandth of a second. And how do we get there? Well, let's count them. One one thousand, one two thousand, one four thousand, one eight thousandth. There we go. You could also gate the light using your ISO or your shutter speed. The neutral density filter doesn't care. It gates the light that's entering the front of the camera. You can choose how to compensate it. If you make it darker one way, you need to make it brighter another way. In this way, I choose to make it brighter the way Fujifilm intended, which is using that really wide aperture. <laughs> that's, that's what they want us to do anyways. So why not shoot at f2 at 1 1,000th one of a second <laughs> when you would really need 1 8,000th of a second at f2 regularly? Okay, so moving along from there, what about the flash? Like, why am I using this flash in particular? Well, I'm using this one because it's bigger and more powerful than the EFX20. The EFX20 is a great flash, and when used in combination with the neutral density filter, it extends the strength of the flash because you can gate the light of the ambient background. Remember, flash does not affect ambient background. Flash affects your subject, your immediate background, your shutter speed affects your ambient background. It's very important when using flash. So we're kind of getting into something new. Fujifilm makes it easy by including a nice uh, flash on the front of it, but it's not very powerful. I think it's around 1.8 a guide number of eight, something like that. Plus, in this arrangement, it's actually blocked by the adapter, so we need to do something else. Since I'm shooting in a situation where I'm getting paid, uh, I want to use the best that I can use, and I need to use something, in this case, that's going to get my light out there farther. And a guide number 58 flash is much more effective at, do at doing that than a guide number 20. You can see the difference right here. Plus, I get more power, quicker recycle uh, time out of this, it makes it easy. So when I'm using this flash, I very simply make some choices myself. With this flash while I'm photographing, when I'm changing my position, I very seldom change my shutter speed, my aperture, and I'm not changing my ISO at all. What I am changing is the strength and intensity of this flash and the spread or the zoom of the flash. Generally for portraits, I'll use a zoom that's nice and wide, like 24 millimeters, especially if I'm within arm's dis distance, and I might use one quarter power. This is a very bright flash. I might even use one eighth power. But here's the thing. It's all done by taste. So while I'm on location and I take my first test shot of my model or my subject, I look and see what my flash exposure is. And I got a pretty good idea on a bright sunny day at the beach after doing hundreds of these that I'm going to need to be at least at one quarter at an arm's distance or twice that to maybe one, uh, one half, just depending. But I'm also going to know that my zoom setting has a quite a bit to do. The zoom allows you to focus how much of that light is going to go straight onto your model or not. So by using one half, even at four or five feet away from my subject on a bright sunny day, but zooming at 24 means I'm going to get as much of a softer light as I can possibly get with this setup right here. Obviously, if I zoomed into 100 millimeters or something like that, I'd get a very hard center bright amount of flash because it's going to beam all that 
light straight without allowing the light to flare some. And I want the flare in order to help make the light softer. Yet when I get further away from my subjects, and they're literally farther from me, even though I'm using a 50 millimeter fixed equivalent lens, I will zoom the flash into 70, 80, 100, 105, something like that, in order to get that light more intensified in order to beam it forwards. That's going to help me get nicer, better front lit photos. Remember, when we're photographing this way, we're actually exposing for the background. I'm exposing for the sky. That's the whole purpose of using the neutral density filter. That's the whole purpose of having the very high sync speed if I need it. But I'm using the wide aperture in order to help create separation from my subject and the background. I want a little bit of that blur so that it looks nice. In that instance, the next thing that I need to do in order to balance those two things is bring in some more light from the front. And photographing at the beach many times with many different systems, specifically other Fuji systems, but also with the A7 series of uh, Sony cameras, I would generally need neutral density filters to bring my shutter speed down. And then I would need multiple flash setup in order to get the reach that I want. Here, I don't need any of that. Now, why the light sphere, Rob? Why do we need this, this light modification? And the answer is very simple. The flash source, no matter what, is very small. Small light sources for strobes make for very harsh light. So I always try to soften it with some kind of light modifier. For me, the light sphere works great. You saw the images, they looked beautiful. That was exactly what we were going for. So in this instance, I'm constantly moving forwards and adjusting the zoom and the power on my flash in order to match what I know is going to be good for that situation. And then I move back and I adjust it. So I'm actually not adjusting any of the exposure on my camera for the most part. I'm generally adjusting it all with the flash. And the X100F allows me to do that very easily. But with any of the X100 series, you'll get these great abilities to sync the flash, the leaf shutter, as well as the wide aperture and the inbuilt neutral density filter. How cool is that? So it's not just the X100F that takes the cake. You do get a higher resolution sensor, and that is worth the upgrade. Guys, I'm Robert Ham with Robert Ham Photography. Today we've been talking X100F and my setup for doing portraits with this camera out on location. I hope that you've enjoyed looking at my workflow, listening to the explanations, and tell me, do you agree, do you disagree? How do you feel about it? Do you use this camera for paid gigs out on your own square of the block, or do you just walk around and capture great candidates? I'd love to hear it. If you've got some work you'd like me to look at, send a link down below. Guys, I want to thank you for watching. I remind you, I'll catch you on the flip side.